نستارت على طول دكتور يلا بسم الله السلام عليكم ان شاء الله in the next few minutes i'll talk about uh, some practical uh, tips and uh, pitfalls uh, directed mainly uh, for younger uh, generation of radiologists uh, some er cases uh, mainly uh, radiology resident uh, will face Uh, starting with the first uh, case, uh, young girl uh, presenting with mild pain and some recently noted urinary frequency. ER physician suspecting cystitis. From the first look, what is this? Yes, this is the mistake I want to hear. Urinary bladder. It looks like urinary bladder. This is LS and this is TS. Good. Let's revise some basic morphology. Urinary bladder in TS view should be rectangular, not circular. Urinary bladder in LS, uh, I'm sorry. Urinary bladder in LS view should overlie the cervix and vagina, inferior or behind symphysis pubis, the shadowing uh, structure. But here it overlies the cervix. This is at a higher location. What should I do? Just angulate the transducer inferiorly to reach behind symphysis pubis. This is the urinary bladder. And this is simple ovarian cyst, yes. It's a common mistake uh, we face in early uh, residency. Okay, the next step. What about this ovarian cyst? The patient may present with some urinary frequency because of mass effect, but more important, the pain. The patient in pain. This is ovarian cyst. Is this a normal location? Ovarian cyst should be to the side of the uterus, not anterior, never to be anterior, never posterior, never superior. So what is your suspicion? Torsion. Ovarian cyst or ovary or ovarian mass in abnormal situs suspect ovarian torsion until proved otherwise. Other case with, it's a classic hemorrhagic cyst, but the ovary in superior location. If this hemorrhagic cyst about four centimeter, nothing to worry, reassurance, but the location. Superior location means ovarian torsion, again. Another case uh, presented with left iliac fossa pain. I informed the clinician she has uh, right-sided dermoid. It looks like uh, dermoid. Uh, so maybe torsion of dermoid cyst. Right side, the clinician insisted. She has left-sided pain. So we uh, complemented by MRI because you are suspecting torsion. Any adnexal cyst or adnexal mass accompanied by pain, suspect a torsion. What about this and what about this? I misinterpreted this hypoechoic structure as a bowel, but now in MRI, it was the right ovary. And this structure, I misinterpreted as the right ovary. It was actually the left ovary in opposite position. What about this structure? I misinterpret it as left ovarian uh, lesion, maybe dermoid, but actually it was torsed fallopian tube. And this echogenic structure, echogenic uh, pattern in uh, sonography, maybe fat, fat in dermoid, maybe posterior enhancement, maybe acute hemorrhage, acute hemorrhage Uh, also has echogenic pattern. So this ovary in abnormal situs. The guidance here is pain. I know there is an excel uh, lesion, mostly dermoid, but pain raises the possibility of ovarian torsion. So please, if you are suspecting torsion, the next modality, if you are not sure, urgent, urgent MRI, okay? So lessons from this uh, uh, case, you have to revise the morphology, basic morphology about urinary bladder and cyst. Ovarian cyst in TS should be circular, not 
rectangular, okay? And uh, urinary bladder should overlie the vagina, should seen, be seen inferior, starting inferior and behind symphysis pubis, not above. Ovarian cyst or ovary in general should be to the side of the uterus, never anterior, never superior, and should not be posterior. Posterior may have another differential diagnosis, I'll tell you in a minute. So this was a simple ovarian cyst with uh, torsion. Uh, another uh, uh, issue here in the Gulf area, uh, there is limited ultrasound studies, like this case. 18 years, virgin with acute right lumbar pain, ER physician suspecting renal stone. So he requested limited study, QB ultrasound, urinary bladder and kidneys only. The mistake will come here. Kidneys are good, urinary bladder are good, is good, and both ureteric jets are seen, so mostly no obstructing stone. But the patient has been right lumbar pain. Trace the adnexa. Ask about last menstrual uh, period. She is a female. Last menstrual period two weeks ago. So I am suspecting corpus luteum or hemorrhagic cyst, something gynecological. Okay. What about the right adnexa? Ecogenic lesion. Ecogenic lesion uh, measuring about four uh, centimeter. No vascularity, okay. The most common uh, lesion, dermoid. So most likely dermoid. Every radiology resident will say dermoid. But what's behind this lesion? Dermoid containing fat, not, yes, yes, yes. Fat, echogenic. Acute blood, echogenic. But fat usually displays posterior attenuation because ultrasound is attenuated significantly in fatty tissues. So posterior attenuations means fatty structure, but here posterior enhancement. Blood act like water, nil attenuation. So ultrasound beam is enhanced behind the acute uh, hemorrhage. So this structure mostly acute hemorrhagic cyst in a normal location, nothing to worry about. We followed up this case, now classic, classic clot retraction, alhamdulillah, okay? So we have to be uh, aware about different patterns of hemorrhagic cyst, especially at resident level. Commonly, the hemorrhagic cyst uh, presented with a reticular pattern. Another pattern, clot retraction. This common patterns, a pattern mentioned in uh, ORETS, but there is an uh, uncommon pattern, like acute hemorrhage, echogenic with posterior enhancement in a normal location, okay? Another pattern, fluid, fluid layering. But the non-dependent component should be echo-free. Otherwise, I will diagnose it as endometrioma. Endometrioma is the most common adnexal lesion displaying fluid, fluid level. But mostly the non-dependent uh, portion will show low level echoes, okay? So lessons from this uh, case, we have to revise the pattern of hemorrhagic cyst. We have to think in any female with acute pain, look for, common is common, look for corpus luteum or hemorrhagic cyst even if the presentation is not classic, right renal colic, right iliac fossa vein, look for gynecological uh, causes. And you have to uh, be aware about some physics. Echogenic structure, maybe fatty, maybe acute uh, blood, maybe posterior enhancement, and so on, correlate with uh, clinical. Another case, 28 uh, years old, left iliac fossa vein. Uh, ER physician, I remember surgeon, uh, suspecting acute diverticulitis. Acute diverticulitis, acute left iliac fossa pain versus gynecologic cause. Alhamdulillah, she has IUD, so I can... Uh, yes, uh, I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> uh, this is a clear cyst, okay? Alhamdulillah, nothing in the uh, left iliac fossa, but we have 
left cyst. What is the common appearance for this cyst or common etiology? Hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic cyst. Abdominal ultrasound alone is not enough. Because if I say this is hemorrhagic cyst, reassurance and send home. I have to complete. Don't say hemorrhagic from abdominal ultrasound only. Don't say hemorrhagic if not classical. We complemented by transvaginal, now classic endometrioma, ground glass, low level internal echoes. Abdominal ultrasound is not enough. Vaginal ultrasound is higher in characterization of adnexal uh, lesions. Uh, Alhamdulillah, hemorrhagic uh, cyst, endometrioma, dermoid cyst, the classic uh, pattern, or adds two. It's totally uh, benign, especially if below uh, 10 centimeter. Yes. Uh, another case with the same etiology, with the same uh, pattern. Two cysts, low level internal echoes, classic endometriomas. But ovaries now in abnormal location, posterior to the uterus, kissing each other. This is exception of the rule. Yes, over in abnormal location, but containing endometriomas, no acute pain. This is pelvic endometriosis, not just endometriomas. If endometrioma is isolated, it's okay. If endometriomas attach it to each other posterior to the uterus, usually there is element of deep infiltrating endometriosis. We have to continue for dynamic transvaginal ultrasound. Another case, uh, this is sagittal view of the uterus. Look for this ovary. Normal appearing, but in abnormal location, posterior to the uterus. And now, what about the other ovary? Posterior and inferior, it is located behind the cervix, behind torus of the uterus, along the area of uterosacral ligament. I know it's in abnormal position, but it is not torsion. This is low level echoes, endometrioma. What is your suspicion? If endometrioma is fixed, try to move it. Try to uh, manipulate the transducer. If it is fixed, suspect deep infiltrating endometriosis. Ask for dynamic ultrasound. What is this structure? Gut signature. This is the rectum, yes, lower rectum, upper rectum. What is this structure? Endometriotic nodule, yes. If you suspecting pelvic endometriosis or peritoneal endometriosis from the classic standard transvaginal ultrasound, you have to complement. Look for other foci of deep infiltrating endometriosis along the bowel, along the urinary bladder, along the distal ureter, and so on. So this was endometriotic nodule, and so on. So if classic endometrioma, this is usual case. If kissing endometriosis or fixed endometrioma, endometrioma in a fixed posterior position to the uterus or inferior uh, position, complement by transvagin dynamic. Sliding of the uterus, sliding of uh, the ovary, look for bowel and urinary bladder endometriosis. Uh, if not by uh, yourself, it's okay. Ask for a consultant. So this case need to be referred to a higher uh, level. Uh, basically, transvaginal is superior in abdominal, and if you see this uh, pattern of endometriosis, complement. Another case, uh, 28 uh, years old, virgin. Uh, virgin, so I cannot perform transvaginal approach, but I can still use the probe. I'll tell you in a minute. Mild uh, pelvic pain, menstrual irregularities. I'm looking for a gynecological cause. Uh, yes we should ask about dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, especially dyspareunia. And during the examination, actually, look at vaginal wall while withdrawing the transducer. This is very important. It can solve a dilemma for the patient. The patient has thick hyperechoic endometrium. This is luteal. So I'm expecting uh, corpus luteum, hemorrhagic cyst. So what in the uh, right adnexa? reticular pattern with layering. This is classic hemorrhagic cyst. But what about this compartment? 
This compartment lies in the uh, near field. I have to enhance the resolution. Now, oh, it contains ecogenic focus. The other possibility will be dermoid, okay? What to do to enhance the resolution? I cannot perform a transvaginal ultrasound. I will use the transvaginal probe or transducer on the abdominal wall because it's higher frequency transducer. Now, it's a clear low level internal echoes. Dermoid versus endometrium, okay? Short term follow up, hemorrhagic cyst, complete resolution, and the other cyst, persis. Now it's time for character, further characterization, of course, MRI. Classic T2 uh, shading with no drop of uh, signal in fat saturated, it's endometrium. So this double pathology and double common pathology, hemorrhagic cyst and endometrioma. Addition of using a higher frequency transducer through the abdominal wall is very helpful. We can use the microconvex transducer used for cranial sonography. We can use even the transvaginal transducer or if slim patient, the linear transducer. Like next case. Next case, nine years old, uh, presented with acute pelvic pain, uh, sent from a pediatric uh, clinic, suspecting mesenteric adenitis or mild form of appendicitis, but she is a female. Remember, uh, when presented to ultrasound uh, unit, the pain is faded away, no pain. Pain on and off, think of, Intermittent, yes, but unfortunately, I couldn't see both ovaries by abdominal approach. No problem, transvaginal transducer on the abdominal wall. You see, he, uh, it's uh, by the way, microconvex. Small right-sided ovary, this is normal for H, and the left is enlarged, enlargement. Ovarian edema is the most important single sign in ovarian torsion. If it doesn't contain any mass or cyst, but if it contains mass, mass or cyst, abnormal location. Uh, Doppler, no vascularity, provided that. Low setting, BRF below 10 centimeter per second, high color gain, high uh, wall filter, okay? Uh, low wall filter. But if I see vascularity, it will not change the diagnosis. The diagnosis is based on B mode finding. Enlarge it, ovary, by comparison. Stromal heterogeneity, and there is good sign in this case. Yes, follicular ring sign. Echogenic, thickened echogenic wall of the follicles. This is early sign, it's a good uh, sign. I told the clinician it's ovarian uh, torsion. He didn't believe me. I told my uh, colleagues in radiology, ovarian torsion, didn't believe me, no pain. So we complemented MRI for confirmation and uh, documentation. Transverse orientation of the right ovary, small size. Vertical orientation of the left ovary, stromal edema, and it's confirmed and alhamdulillah saved. Operation done within less than two hours. Uh, okay, so lessons from uh, this case, inversion, or in children, or in female with uh, refusing a transvaginal approach, have pelvic inflammation, uh, pain and uh, tenderness, use the transvaginal transducer through the abdominal wall, use the linear, use the microconvex, any higher frequency uh, transducer, okay? Endometrium, and uh, the next uh, case, uh, presented with folliculometry, follicle monitoring study uh, under fertility uh, treatment. The right ovary is uh, fine, responding well, and the left ovary shows classic, classic endometrium. A classic, I'm, I'm sorry, dermoid. Okay, classic dermoid. And this is by abdominal uh, approach. This is easy uh, case. What I need uh, here to measure the dermoid if it is less than nine or 10 centimeter because it belongs to a category and above another ORADS category by ultrasound. Another case with the same etiology. 
this is a uh, left ovary. I cannot see the right ovary. Patient has chronic pelvic pain, but mild, no fever. I cannot see the right ovary, but do you see this increased echogenicity in the pelvis? This increased echogenicity, maybe echogenic fat, BID, or maybe something else. Is it localized now? Another dermoid with fluid, oh, fluid, fluid leveling. Uh, okay, the measurement now about uh, six or five centimeter. Oh, that's two. But now it's elongated by locular. Now the size more than 11 or 12, another category. So get the maximum length of this uh, lesion to put it in the appropriate uh, ORADS category. It's bilocular with fluid fluid uh, level, and of course, the classic uh, MR criteria with uh, drop of signal in fatty tissue. Uh, so this is uh, a dermoid cyst incidentally found during fertility treatment or folliculometry. You have to be aware about the different patterns of dermoid cyst. Dermoid cyst is a great mimicker. It has many patterns, some classic, some is not, like this case. Uh, middle age female, mild right loin pain. Again, requesting QB study. In the Gulf, most of uh, these studies done by technician sonography, not by physician. But I insist to revise every case because look for a cause of the pain. No, ignorable, ignorable, yes, but ignorable. Uh, I'm looking for a cause of pain, not just the stites. Urinary system looks, looks fine. Kidney fine, urinary bladder fine. Should look for adnexa. Left ovary is well seen. I cannot see the right ovary. Anything in the pelvis? This echogenic structure may be bowel. Maybe bowel. Maybe dermoid. If you are not sure, ask the patient to go to the bathroom, to uh, walk for uh, one minute, uh, and see if this pattern is fixed or uh, mobile, it changed, or something else. The left, I cannot see the right, and here is the uterus. Not classic. This is not classic, but I'm suspecting there is something, something here. What to do else? Doppler. Why? I don't uh, want, uh, I know there is no vascularity in dermoid, but dermoid will have mass effect. You see the vessels here around, it is compressed, it's displaced the vessels. This uh, vascular compression suggesting there is something here. If you are suspecting, re-examine or send for another superior uh, imaging modality. Yes. MRI, it was a classic dermoid. So remember, dermoid is a great mimicker. May have similar appearance to bowel gases and food uh, residue. If you get this suspicion, please complement. Either follow up short term or uh, MRI. Use the color uh, doubler to guide you. Look for mass effect. So this case, uh, is a dermoid cyst. Okay, another uh, case. I'm looking for the time. Yes. Nine years uh, old, uh, presented uh, from urology clinic. Uh, because she has problem uh, with uh, urination, please, uh, Mr. Radiologist, measure the urinary bladder before and after, avoiding. Uh, okay, what else? Incidental finding. The adnexa contain, the left adnexa, uh, cyst, maybe functional, nine years old. It's okay. But LS, is it simple cyst or? Yes. First, this is the ovary. This is the ovary. And this is elongated tubular structure. Hydrosalpings in this age, maybe. Look for the other adnexa, please. No, the uh, uterus is fine. Uterus is uh, fine. Here is the uterus. It's okay. And this is the left side. Sorry. 
this is the right site. Bilateral hydrosalpings in children? Yes. What is the etiology behind this? Ask about previous operation. The commonest source for occlusion is adhesions. Uh, no endometriosis in this uh, age, okay? Uh, dual, left and uh, right. Yes, yes. So it has, uh, she has bilateral hydrosalpings, nine years old. This is called pediatric hydrosalpings, uh, commonly, uncommonly seen, but usually after abdominal surgeries like appendectomy and may have spontaneous resolution, okay? So this is hydrosalpings in young age. The trick here is elongated pattern, tubular structure, especially on the left. On the right, you may think of mucosal appendix, okay? But usually you need another uh, imaging modality, like MRI. Okay, uh, difficult case. It's abdominal, not gynecological, just a minute. Middle age, yes, middle age patient, two or three weeks postpartum, has epigastric pain and concurrent pelvic pain. Vomiting, high TLC. I'm looking for postpartum infection or inflammation. Okay, uh, I'm a radiologist. I started with the right hypochondrium. What's here? Yes, but acute calcular cholestasis is very good possibility from this appearance, but your uh, gallbladder wall is thickened, not hyperemic. Urinary bladder, uh, gallbladder average extension, not over distended. Stones are mobile, not impacted in the neck. Still acute calcular cholecystitis is a possibility, but try to analyze the pelvic vein. Pelvic vein, there is some content increased ecogenicity in the fat, incre significant increased ecogenicity in uh, the fat, and, yes, what is this? Left adnexal, elongated structure. Hydrosalbings. Uh, maybe biosalbings, yes. To be sure, I cannot see this area, no problem. Use linear or transvaginal, incomplete safety is seen, okay. How to gather all findings together? Pelvic inflammation, hydro or biosalbings, and cholecystitis. Any pathology gather all together? Fitz ho cortez syndrome, or berihepatitis. Inflammation, because the patient has repeated attacks of BID, so this is most likely a chronic, a chronic hydrosalbings, uh, and activated uh, now spread of infection along the right baracolic gutter. This is another case also from practice, pelvic inflammation and subhepatic echogenic fat, turbid fluid, it's very hepatitis again. Faith? Yes, yes, uh, around the liver, around the liver. Gallbladder wall thickening, increased the fat echogenicity along the liver, Below the liver, along the colon, along the right paracolic gutter. This is a source of ascending infection from the pelvis to the right side of the abdomen. So correlate between right hypochondrial pathology and pelvic pathology. This is Fitzhoe-Cortez uh, syndrome. Okay, another case, 21 years old, right iliac fossa vein. The pain is repeated many times. The clinician usually thinking of uh, repeated mild attacks of appendicitis or mesenteric adenitis. Right iliac fossa looks fine. So check the adnexa, please. What about the right adnexa? Is this pathology? Maybe dermoid? Yes or no? I don't suggest dermoid because I see the ovary itself. It's not, yes, it's extra ovarian. Yes, what about this structure? Uh, maybe thickened the tube, yes. Other adnexa, what about this tubular structure? Hydrosalvings, very good, 
I'm, I'm happy to hear this mistake. Okay. <laughs> Maybe, but just a minute. Doppler will solve this case. What about the right ovary? Hybremic. What about the, and the edematous, what about the fallopian tube? Thickened and hybremic. What about this ecogenic structure? It's ecogenic fat. Hybremic fat with edema. Ecogenic fat is your best friend in localizing acute inflammation or acute edema or even around torsion. So this side, acute salpingitis. What about the other side? Is this fallopian tube? I'm putting Doppler no color. Simply, uh, just, just a minute. What is the differential diagnosis of dilated tubular structure? Pelvic varices. But pelvic varices has very slow flow. Ask the patient to valsalva. Now, it's pelvic varices. So the patient has two sources of chronic pelvic pain, this menorrhea, this uh, peronia, and, and, and. BID activated on the right side and pelvic congestion on the left side. This case in need for ovarian vein duplex study because it's commonly secondary to, to ovarian vein incompetence. So we have two mimics here. This is not dermoid, this is salpingitis, and this is not hydrosalpings, this is Yes, pelvic varices. Thank you. Uh, any questions? No, alhamdulillah. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Smail. Now, uh, there is any question for the speakers? We'll start by Professor Tania. There is anyone want to ask Professor Tanya in the four talks? Yes, Doctor. Okay. 